trying to get this camera sorted out here. <laughs> How's that? Yeah, there we are. Um, yeah, so we are here now, back in back in the studio, back here in Pennsylvania, and um, I had to go to uh, over to Colorado to the Anderson Ranch uh, to do a workshop. Um, which I've done now, of course, and uh, that went really well. We had 15 students, we had a great bunch, we had a nice time there at Anderson Ranch, and um, I felt it was a good time. I felt, you know, the good thing about, you know, when you teach is that you, you get back yourself, you, you, you receive back as you give out, and, and that becomes then a very enriching experience. So, yeah, we, it was a super time. It was a little bit high in the mountains, so uh, we, I don't know if we were about 8,000 or 8,500 feet. So the, the atmosphere was a little bit rarefied. <laughs> Felt like someone was sitting on my chest, you know. Anyway, um, and then after that, we went down to, Jennifer and I went down to, um, down into Utah and we went to the, uh, the Arches National Park, which was absolutely incredible. Gosh. <laughs> uh, we stayed in Moab, actually. And, um, and then we took trips out from there. We drove up along the Colorado River. We went uh, to Castle Valley, spectacular. Uh, we went down the other way, all along the along the the, the banks of the river the River Colorado. Uh, incredible stone formations of rocks and sandstone, and just uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, I think it's probably about the most spectacular scenery I've ever I've ever I've ever, I've ever seen. You know. Um, uh, and the, the Arches National Park was just incredible. Just, if you've not visited the Arches National Park, you've got to go there, especially if you are a, an American. <laughs> In fact, when we went there, we were, we were probably noticeably more Europeans there. But um, anyway, I, I, I did do, I did do um, a couple of video clips from there, which I'll probably upload at some point, um, just for just for inspiration, just to um, so you can see the the scenery, so you can see the some of the arches and some of those uh, yeah those rocks up there. Anyway, so it's now back here in Pennsylvania, and it's boy, it's sweaty here and humid. Over there, it was so nice and dry. It actually reminded me of Spain. It was very similar. But here now, the humidity, as my neighbour Gary says, you can cut it with a knife. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I've just um, got some balls of clay here, um, balled up here. I'm just going to get back into doing some throwing. In fact, the last time we were, we were here together, we, I was doing some um, small tea bowls, which I'm going to be putting in a raw, in a, I'm going to raw glaze them. In other words, I'm not going to bisque them, but I put like a clay type glaze over them and then fire them straight up to high temperature. So we cut out the, all that frolicking around in the biscuit, <laughs> in the biscuit kiln, in this kiln. Okay, so I'm just going to get the camera down here. I hope we have enough light. Let's have a look. Yes. Yes, as you can see, we're on the on the um, on this leech type treadle wheel. I'm um, hopefully going to be having some here to to show you um, some. In fact, a much nicer one than 
than this one with a rosewood top along the edge there and all very nice. Some people some people said, oh, you can't have that with that kind of flywheel because it's made out of that stuff, which is, well, you know, tell you what, you know, the original, the original, the original leech wheels that were made by Woodleys were made, had a, a composite type flywheel like that. It's very heavy, you see, so it works very well. And to be quite honest, they don't get wet. In any case, this one has been waterproof, but anyway, what was I going to say? Yes, <laughs> the, the, the ones that we're now having made are having the flywheel made out of marine ply, okay, so there's no danger of water there, absorption, and they also, they've got four holes in them so that you can add your own ballast to make the wheel either lighter or heavier, heavier if you want to, so yeah. Let's have a look to see if I've got my tools. I want, I was looking for my needle tool. Which is here somewhere. Somewhere. Da, 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 da. Okay, well, let's, let's hope we don't need to use the needle tool because we're going to throw so well and so on centre that we're not going to, we're not going to have need for it. I have actually got another one here which is just an ordinary, an ordinary, uh, an ordinary needle, sewing needle, stuck in a piece of cork which actually works reasonably well. Um, so, let's go see if we can remember how to throw pots. It's always good to be back on this wheel because, or well, this kind of wheel. Yeah, I wanted to have a, a firing which would not, you know, just predominantly or totally made, made up of uh, raw glazed pots. Um, hi to everybody out there, if you were on the workshop with me uh, at Anderson Ranch and I just wanted to say, I don't know if you'll get this message but the, the email address that, sorry not the email address, the website address that was given on a sheet of paper that we had at the end, remember with all the names of the different participants of the workshop, etc. Where my name was put, it had their, the, a, a website address, and the website address was wrong. It's put, put there as simonleachceramics.com, which used to, used to be my old website address, but, but for about a year or more now has, has not been, and has, is redundant, so please take a note of that, Simon Leach Ceramics, sorry, <laughs> Simon Leach Pottery, that's the address, simonleachpottery.com, so please change that, and while we're, while we're here talking just about that, um, for anybody who's interested out there, we we do run workshops here in Pennsylvania. In this studio, we've got now, how many wheels have we got? We've got one, two, three. We've got five Shimpo wheels plus this kick wheel. And by the time we have the next workshop, we may have another, we should have more kick wheels here. 
So, um, the dates of that are on the website, simonleachpottery.com, and that is 13th and 14th of August and the 27th and 28th. So, if you feel uh, you'd like to get some extra practice in, I call these kind of keep practicing workshops because that's that's what we need to do, isn't it? Practice. Practice. Um, that was the theme actually of the workshop that we did out, out there at Anderson Ranch was keep practicing. And it's probably the thing that we as potters need to do most and what we don't do. Um, especially people who are hobby potters. I know you find it very difficult to be self-disciplined, don't you? And you tend to wander off and do make just what you feel like maybe sometimes not always maybe but you know so and sometimes you need a bit of discipline and sometimes it's easier if somebody else is disciplining you rather than you disciplining yourself i think we all find that don't we that self-discipline when it's when it comes to Pottery is not always, well, it's such a nice shape, you know, we'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll carry on with this one and see what happens, you know. And rather than maybe setting out with a, a clear goal of what you want to make and then having the ability to carry it out. Um, So these little these uh, tea bowls that I'm making are similar in shape, but there is some variation, and that's that's okay with these because they're a little bit more of a free free expression. You know what I mean? We're not working to rigid, tight measurements, although we are actually starting out with. These are 14 ounces, so... I'm using a mirror just as a visual aid to assist me. Always a good idea use a mirror or have it there handy and then you can you can refer to it yeah. funny things tea bowls are what something an observation of mine and that is you know people People collect these drinking cups. We call them tea bowls after the, the Chinese, Japanese, or the Japanese tea ceremony. But and maybe some people use them for drinking tea out of. Them. They are in fact collected by people. People tend to collect them. always seem to sell for a, a disproportionately high, I feel, because they're, they're, quite, they're quite easy to make, but they're very kind of, the thing about them is they're very pers personable, you know, and so they tend to be rather individual, 
uh, in their character. Um, maybe we'll put that one up. I don't want to be blocking your view, so we'll move those. I always sort of like making a batch of these if I've been making some other more tight shapes and then it's sort of like I just want to do some pottery that's a little bit more freewheeling if you know what I mean and I'm working within certain a, a sort of concept but there's free, there is some freedom there of expression which is, which is quite nice and, and I make them and decorate them all differently so they're not they're not all the same by any means they're all they've all got their individual voice if you know what I mean now I don't like them too you know you get a bit of a wobble in it and you think well it doesn't matter because it's It's doing its own thing. Well, I don't want it to just totally do its own thing. So, I may have to just correct the wobble a little bit. But some wobbliness is, you could say, is acceptable. But not too much. <laughs> but then some people make them really wobbly, really earthy and organic. They're an easy little form, really, based on basically pulling up a cylinder. But I kind of push them in at the base to give them a little bit of a, a feeling of lift because they, in fact, these are going to be trimmed afterwards, as you know. You know, this is one of the nicest wheels for making and doing this kind of pottery because, you know, um, tea bowls such as these, the speed, I'm controlling the speed with my leg, but it's unconscious, I'm unconsciously controlling it. Got a gentle clickety click noise, which I like. Feels like feels like the clay and the wheel are kind of breathing together, you know. So
Now, my grandfather, Bernard Leach, he used to use one of these wheels to throw on. And of course, because he learned to make pots out in Japan, where they have the wheel in Japan going around the other way. And it's not something that I've ever really learned how to do, is to make a pot going around um, the other way, like that. But I thought I'd give it a go. So we're going to make the wheel go, instead of anti-clockwise, we're going to make the wheel go clockwise now. Of course that means I'm not working here, I'm working now on this side. So let's just see let's just see what that does. It's a bit it's a little bit like um, it's a little bit like learning to drive a car. If you're used to driving, say, a, a right-hand drive car, you'll then you then go and make that change. Sometimes I get students who who've learned to throw in this way. And I do find it actually quite difficult to help them because I'm because everything's round the other way, you know. I'm sort of like confused. It's like the first time you have to drive on the other side of the road, like we do in England, some parts of the world. It's quite strange the first time you do it. So, I'm just practicing here to see Seems to be getting wider at the top, doesn't it? But it's surprising, I mean now for example I can get into a left hand drive car or a right hand drive car and drive it and I, I don't even hardly notice I'm doing it, it just does. So it is something one can yeah, get used to. We're sort of getting there, I think, aren't we? everything around the other way. Definitely something that needs some practice. first pot I've ever made doing it like that. I'll get the bottom inside there nice. Does it? Get the insides of your pots nice. You know, get the bottoms right, get them looking, f if they're a plate, flat or they're a bowl, a nice curve, or the inside of a mug, then, a, you know. Okay, well. Ooh, God. <laughs> I put my foot down on the wheel thinking to try to stop it. Of course, the wheel's going the other way, so instead of, <laughs> instead of putting my foot there, stopping the wheel, my foot is, oh, goes the other way. Could have had an embarrassing moment. Right, get this one off.
Okay, well, you can see it's a little small. <laughs> okay, folks, well, we're going to continue making clips and pots. Um, why don't you do the same? Okay, keep practicing. See you soon. Da 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 da.